Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our Bible in a Year reading plan. I am your host, Shanique, and I'm excited that you're here. Today, we're looking at Genesis chapter 18 to 20. Now, full disclosure, I am studying in real time with you. So each day, the videos will likely drop at different times. So I just want to encourage you just to subscribe. So that way, you'll be notified whenever a new video is published. Now, Let's get started. Genesis chapter 18 to 20. And I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. Chapter 18. Now the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, while he was sitting at the tent door in the heat of the day. When he raised his eyes and looked, behold, three men were standing opposite him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed down to the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please do not pass your servants by. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and make yourselves comfortable under the tree. And I'll bring a piece of bread so that you may refresh yourselves. After that, you may go on since you have visited your servant. And they said, so do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly, prepare three measures of fine flour, knead it and make bread cakes. Abraham also ran to the herd and took a tender and choice calf and gave it to the servant. And he hurried to prepare it. He took curds and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he was standing by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, Where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. He said, I will certainly return to you at this time next year. And behold, your wife, Sarah, will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. Sarah was past childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, after I have become old, am I to have pleasure, my Lord being old also? But the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I actually give birth to a child when I am so old? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you. At this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah denied it, however, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. Then the men rose up from there and looked down toward Sodom. And Abraham was walking with them to send them off. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Since Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation, and in him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. For I have chosen him so that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice so that the Lord may bring upon Abraham what he had spoken about him. And the Lord said, The outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great, and their sin is exceedingly grave. I will go down now and see whether they have done entirely as the outcry which has come to me indicates, and if not, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham was still standing before the Lord. Abraham approached and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous people within the city. Will you indeed sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous and the wicked are treated alike. Far be it from you, shall not the judge of all the earth deal justly? So the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare the entire place on their account. And Abraham replied, Now, behold, I have ventured to speak to the Lord, although I am only dust and ashes. Suppose the fifty righteous are lacking five. Will you destroy the entire city because of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. And he spoke to him yet again and said, Suppose forty are found there. And he said, I will not do it on account of the forty, 
Then he said, Oh, may the Lord not be angry, and shall I speak? Suppose thirty are found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Now behold, I have ventured to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. And he said, I will not destroy it on account of the twenty. Then he said, Oh, may the Lord not be angry, and I shall speak only this once. Suppose ten are found there. And he said, I will not destroy it on account of the ten. As soon as he had finished speaking to Abraham, the Lord departed, and Abraham returned to his place. Chapter 19 Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening as Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he stood up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. And he said, Now, behold, my lords, please turn aside into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. They said, No, but we shall spend the night in the public square. Yet he strongly urged them, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he prepared a feast for them and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, surrounded the house, both young and old, all the people from every quarter, and they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may have relations with them. But Lot went out to them at the doorway, and shut the door behind them, behind him, and said, Please, my brothers, do not act wickedly. Now look, I have two daughters who have not had relations with any man. Please, let me bring them out to you and do to them whatever you like. Only do not do anything to these men, because they have come under the shelter of my roof. But they said, get out of the way. They also said, this one came in as a foreigner and already he's acting like a judge. Now we'll treat you worse than them. So they pressed hard against Lot and moved forward to break the door. But the men reached out their hands and brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, from the small to the great, so that they became weary of trying to find the doorway. Then the two men said to Lot, Whom else do you have here? A son-in-law and your sons and daughters, and whoever you have in the city, bring them out of the place, for we are about to destroy this place because their outcry has become so great before the Lord that the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who were to marry his daughters and said, Up, get out of this place, for the Lord is destroying the city. But he appeared to be but he appeared to his son-in-law to be joking. When morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he hesitated. So the men grasped his hand and the hand of his wife and the hands of his two daughters, because the compassion of the Lord was upon him. And they brought him out and put him outside the city. When they had brought them outside, one said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you and do not stay anywhere in the surrounding area. Escape to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, Oh no, my lords. Now, behold, your servant has found favor in your sight and you have magnified your compassion, which you have shown me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains for the disaster will overtake me and I will die. Now behold, this town is near enough to flee to, and it is small. Please, let me escape there. Is it not small? So that my life may be saved? And he said to him, Behold, I grant you this. Request also not to overthrow the town of which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore the town was named Zor. The sun had risen over the earth when Lot came to Zor. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the surrounding area and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife from behind him looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Now Abraham got up early in the morning and went to the place where he had stood before the Lord. 
and he looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the surrounding area. And behold, he saw the smoke of the land ascended like a smoke of a furnace. So it came about when the Lord destroyed the cities of the surrounding area that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of destruction when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had lived. Now Lot went up from Zor with his two daughters and stayed in the mountains because he was afraid to stay in Zor. And he stayed in a cave, he and his two daughters. Then the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man on earth to have relations with us according to the custom of all the earth. Come, let's make our father drink wine, and let's sleep with him, so that we may keep our family alive through our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and slept with her father, and he did not know when she lay down or got up. On the following day, the firstborn said to the younger, Look, I slept last night with my father. Let's make him drink wine tonight too. Then you go in and sleep with him, so that we may keep our family alive through our father. So they had their father drink wine that night too, and the younger got up and slept with him, and he did not know when she lay down or got up. And so both of the daughters of Lot conceived by their father. The firstborn gave birth to a son and named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. As for the younger, she also gave birth to a son and named him Benami. He is the father of the sons of Ammon to this day. Chapter 20 Now Abraham journeyed from there toward the land of Negev and settled between Kadesh and Shur, then he lived for a time in Gerar. And Abraham said of his wife, Sarah, She's my sister. So Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent men and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream of the night and said to him, Behold, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is married. Now Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will you kill a nation, even though blindness? Did he himself not say to me, she is my sister? And she herself said, and she herself said, he is my brother. In integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands, I have done this. Then God said to him in a dream, yes, I know that in the integrity of your heart, you have done this. And I also kept you from sin against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Now then, return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you and you will live. But if you do not return her, know that you will certainly die, you and all who are yours. So Abimelech got up early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their presence. And the people were greatly frightened. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? And how have I sinned against you, that you have brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done to me things that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, what have you encountered that you have done this thing? Abraham said, Because I thought surely there is no fear of God in this place, and they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she actually is my sister, the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And it came about when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said to her, This is a kindness which you will show to me. Everywhere we go, say of me, he is my brother. Abimelech then took sheep and oxen and male and female servants and gave them to Abraham and returned his wife Sarah to him. Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you. Settle wherever you please. To Sarah he said, Look, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. It is your vindication before all who are with you and before everyone you are cleared. Then Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his female slaves so that they give birth to children. For the Lord had completely closed all the wombs of the household of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Okay, that's our reading for today. Now, what really stood out to me from this story, right? The story of Sodom. Now, the story of Sodom, it's a really sad story that reminds us just how much God really hates sin, right? In this chapter, we also get introduced to the concept of homosexuality. 
But what really stood out to me in these chapters, though, was this. Now, when Lot and Abraham were choosing where to settle, and we read this earlier this week, Lot chose what he thought was the good stuff, right? The land looked good, right? It was fertile. As a result, he pitched his tent near Sodom. He didn't live in the city. He pitched it near Sodom, right? However, if you fast forward the story as we read tonight, did you notice where the angels found him? They found him in Sodom, right? Then it really dawned on me as I read that. You can't decide to live near sin and think that it won't affect you. So if you stay close enough to sin, it will eventually draw you in, right? Then you might find yourself so entrenched where it literally takes an act of God to pull you out, to save you, or worse, you lose out on being saved. And that really hit me as I read that passage. So here is what I want you to take away. As Christians, your environment matters. Don't be so naive to think that the influences that you surround yourself with won't impact you. The friends you keep, what you see, the things you listen to, what you watch on a daily basis, they all have an impact on us. Anything that is constantly around you will eventually influence you for good or bad. And that's what I want you to take away from today. If you had any more light bulb moments, I'd love if you just drop it in the chat so we can all just learn from each other. And that's it for today. I will hope you'll join me tomorrow where we move on to day six of our Bible in a Year reading plan.